Hello, and welcome to the Healing Dreams Project, exploring projective dream work for your health and wholeness with hosts Billy Ortiz and Dr. Roy Spitz. I am the producer, Viviana, and today we are going to just have a discussion between me and Dr. Royce Fitz. He has written a book that I highly, highly recommend. It's, I just finished it. It's amazing, super entertaining, soulful, profound, gorgeous, just I couldn't put it down. That's called The Geography of the Soul, Dreams, Reality, and the journey of a lifetime. This is a book by Dr. Royce Fitz, and we thought we would just uh, dive into it, give it a little preview, a little uh, five stars uh, before its actual release, because it's expected to be released in a couple months. So, Dr. Royce Fitz, can you tell, I, I'm just curious, I mean, it was just such a, I, I'm a traveler. I love traveling and I loved joining hands in a way, the way you brought us in in the book uh, on this very sp spiritual, special, uh, just and um, joyful uh, journey. Did, how did how did how did you even think? Did you know when you went on the journey that you wanted to write the book? No. I did not know I was going to write this book. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I, I want to back up a little bit in relation to Billy not being able to be here today. So she has, you know, given her blessing for this. And this is just a really good time uh, for you and I to have this conversation about the book. So she'll join more later as, as uh, that unfolds. I did not know I was going to write this book. I'm a, I, I journal when I'm with clients. Probably one of the things they get real annoyed with me about is uh, me encouraging them to journal, journal their thoughts, journal their dreams, journal their life, not a diary. You know, I always tease them. We're not talking about a diary, We're talking about a journal. So <clears throat> I have, so when I, when I did this journey, I naturally knew I was going to take some kinds of notes, either on my computer, my laptop, or uh, in my trusty little leather bound uh, journal that I've carried with me for 35 years or so. And so I did all of that and came back sat down at my desk and thought i need to write all of this out while they you know while all of these details were fresh and so i did that and uh where <laughs> i'm you know a writer will probably often say this where one starts and where one ends with the final uh draft there are so many meanderings, stravags along the way. And uh, as we've often talked about Jeremy Taylor, I had this manuscript of stream of conscious journaling that at that moment I was thinking, I don't know, maybe this is a book. I don't know. I And I sent it to him and insisted that he read it. And, um, and, you know, where that manuscript uh, was then and where it is now, so, 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 so different. So uh, the book is about a Stravag, a which is a great old Scottish word that I had no idea existed. And it translates in some ways as um, aimless, defiant wandering. And the book is a kind of aimless, defiant, wandering manuscript. 
w and with purpose. And the word Stravag came out of a, a tragedy in Scotland's life, Scotland the nation, in which many of uh, Scottish people took their Stravag as a defiant spiritual wandering. And so that is how this book is. And I haven't described it that way before, Viviana, until just now, even though the word Stravag is central in the book. Yes, you use that word throughout the whole book. And I, I had never verbalized it, so I didn't know how, how to even pronounce it. It's a new word for me as well. <laughs> Well, it, it, so l let's just say about that, because, uh, you know, if you look it up on online with uh, the dic uh, dictionary.com or something, and there's the little uh, icon for uh, how to pronounce this, it can be pronounced several ways. Uh, so the way that I have heard it and the way that I was coached to say it, which I describe in the book, is by uh, pronouncing it. Stravag. And I, I, well, first of all, I love journals. So the, and I love dreams and I love waking dreams and nighttime dreams. And I love how you inserted some of your dreams in here. And mm -hmm. I love the meandering of it all of, mm -hmm. of, of bringing the past and embroidering it into the future the present and it's all in there and it's it's just so um it's like you just want to get keep going because uh to see how where it will lead and it's it's just yeah. it's a uh, very compelling and i just loved i wondered how the process was so you started off as journaling and then and then from there what happened next how did it you say the manuscript was first one version and now it came out as this so how was that connection how did that happen so in my journaling uh there were times that i journaled on the computer every day and you know throughout that journey and and um uh how it ended up in in being book form. Is that how, is that mm -hmm. what you're, yeah. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> uh, I, I'm hesitating because I'm, I'm trying to find the right words. Uh, sometimes I believe stories are asking to be told. These are like dreams. A dream is, is here for us. And sometimes it feels unbidden, like, where does that thing come from? Where, do, where, what an outrageous, and yet, and so it's almost like dreams have their own life. Uh, maybe they do literally or metaphorically, they certainly do. A story is kind of like that too. And after I wrote a very, very long journaling manuscript, uh, I, I could not let go of this, or maybe the proper way to describe it is this would not let me go. Uh, so that I began to try to refine it and recreate some of the, uh, experiences that I had on my hike. Um, and as as I did that, uh, what began to materialize is uh, this uh, experience of when I was actually doing the hike, the, the, what, the order of these dreams that I share are there on the hike. This is the, the, the experience of the landscape in England where the hike took place. Uh, I felt so in tune as I was taking each step. And, and so the, the reflections that I have as I'm walking are basically exactly as I wrote in the book. Uh, 
one of my favorite memories right now as we're visiting about it is when I uh, was walking along the Ridgeway Trail and I enter a pasture and in England, there is some version of the freedom to roam tradition. And so I'm walking, I open the, this gate, wooden gate opens easily and it shuts easily. And I make sure, you know, I'm in somebody's pasture. And I was walking right in the middle of a herd of dairy cows. I remember reading that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I just felt so bonded with these beings. They came right up to me. They were nuzzling me. They were standing in the path and it immediately reminded me of a dream that I had, what, 40 years prior of being a young whippersnapper seminary student ready to, you know, engage life uh, in a parish setting and how I had a dream about uh, being with cattle because I'm raised, you know, on farms and ranches in Nebraska. And, and in the dream, I had this intimate conversation with these cattle, you know, and to explain this in words right now, Viviana, it's like, Royce is really wacko. Well, dreams are this way. And 40 years later, I'm in a pasture with these dairy cows and remembering that dream and just feeling welcomed by these beings and also feeling that I'm friends with them. Anyway, so as I was walking on this Stravag, I, I would have all kinds of experiences like, like that, of where a dream or a story of a client that I've worked with would come to me and I would reflect upon that along this uh, elegant, beautiful, hidden gem of a trail in England. Yeah, I, that's what I love about journals. And specifically, that's my favorite genre. So that's why I just loved this. It, it somehow offers the reader a very authentic, very intimate, super honest, um, and and vulnerable account of of what's going on and so there's no nothing hidden it's just straight there and that that's what I loved the most was when when you even would would say oh I'm feeling you know giving the the, the incredible details of how a person feels that's what I that was what I found most gripping most interesting and most I connected most with with some of the personal yes. sides. Yeah. So I do feel very vulnerable in writing this book and, uh, you know, I'm prone to my own versions of anxiety and, uh, melancholy and, and putting myself out there or having the book invite me to do this, this, uh, that this is a challenge and yet this is so central i i want to i want to live as authentic as i possibly can and unguarded is um a scary thing and and yet i feel like in order for us for us for you me any of our listeners for any being that has consciousness this is, in my belief, this is our calling. And uh, that's why I called it the geography of the soul. You know, there is a physical geography that we all are of. And there's a spiritual geography. And and uh, for us to walk into our own soul and to know ourselves and to be able to share that with others along the way this is how i believe healing is invited for persons and for our earth so i i want to i want this book to provoke others 
to consider how what their own version of authenticity is and to live that well it's also about this this journey to a specific part of the planet mm -hmm. and it's funny i i had to laugh today when I, when i was driving along and all of a sudden i saw a sign that i've passed a million times and it said ridgeway street or something like that ridgeway whoa. i said whoa <laughs> mm -hmm. i had never seen it before and yet it was right there in front of me so i i just love how you took us in this journey and described i mean it made me want i've never been a hiker because mm -hmm. of my physical limitations but i mm -hmm. i want to walk it now myself i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> it just was very very inspiring um to to i don't know i i, I it just captivated me and Iona, I resonated with Iona so much because I, even though Iona was in the Inner Hebrides, I was in the Outer Hebrides in Kalanish. Um, and so when you were describing the that area, I just very much resonated. And I, I, I could almost feel and uh, that I was in, I had gone to Iona as well. Is that how you say it? Iona, yes. Iona, okay. Yes. So and, I, Iona yeah. is a tiny island in the inner her Hebrides of Scotland. So I, I, so that's what you're referring to. Yes. Yeah. Well, tell us a little more about how that, because that in the book you described it as as something that you picked up along the way. It wasn't part of the original plan. Is that right? That's that's right. Uh, I, I I do want to back up a little, and a little bit and say that. The, my hike took place in southern England on the oldest road in England and Europe, and that's described in the book, I, uh, I, I hope sufficiently. That road, that Ridgeway Trail, is a natural trail that emerged when the Ice Age began to recede, and so this ridge uh, formed by the glaciers and at one time in history, in our, in our Earth's history, that ridge, which became a path, which became a road, uh, ventured all the way across England and before the English Channel existed, went into Europe. So when I read about that many years ago, I, I just, I, this, the trail called me. Uh, I love to hike and I love to experience land in, in, in micro ways, not necessarily, you know, travel the earth. Yes, that's dramatic and beautiful, but to know a piece of the earth intimately. And, and I think that's kind of reflective of my own sense of self. I want to be known, you know, fully as is possible. And I want to know others that way. And, and so there's that beautiful metaphor, I think, for us with the earth, to know the tiny pieces of the earth that holds us. So you were asking about Iona. And so after the hike, I did go to Iona. Uh, how Iona came about for me is that many years ago, I, you know, many, probably 30 years ago, uh, I had come across information about this little tiny island uh, off of the coast of Scotland that uh, holds some of the oldest memories of spirituality on the earth. And uh, in, in recent decades, uh, Iona became uh, a location for uh, modern day spiritualities like Christianity from Ireland to Scotland, uh, the, the priests came to Iona first and introduced the British Isles to Christianity. Prior to that, there were numerous other forms of spirituality that existed. And, and then in recent decades, uh, there is a Christian, uh, uh, community that bases itself in in uh, I, Iona 
uh, and uh, it, it's called the Iona community and it's sort of based non-denominationally, very liberal Christian related to the Church of Scotland, which is essentially Presbyterian. Okay, so I'm a theologian and minister and all that stuff. So I've read about this and was always curious. So back to the Ridgeway, I'm at a bed and breakfast um, and I got to know the host pretty well, getting ready to leave the next morning on the rest of, uh, not on the rest, but on another leg of the Ridgeway Trail. And so we started talking. And so they shared with me where they were from, and I and which was uh, the Inner Hebrides or the or the coast of Scotland. And I said, "Oh, that's cool. I'd love to go. I'd love to go see it." And they kind of looked at me like, "Why?" You know. <laughs> and I thought. Because, you know, the shore, the wind, the ocean, the craginess of Scotland has always drawn me. And then, so they whipped out their maps out of their beautiful library that they had in their den. And so we started looking and I was looking at, you know, Western Scotland and they were saying, this is where they were from. And just by accident, sort of, you know, whatever that means, I... I saw the Inner Hebrides and the little tiny island of Iona was there. And it was like, discussion ends. I am going to Iona at the end of this Ridgeway Trail hike. So that's how that came about. And then, you know, what you were referring to uh, unfolded. And it too was one of my favorite experiences of the whole journey painful in a way painful painful mm -hmm. yeah because iona if any of our listeners ever digs into the history uh she's idealized i call her as she she feels very crone uh, very very yes exactly she is crone uh, this rock in the sea near scotland and I idealized her also, and because, you know, in modern day Christianity and in other spiritualities, she is looked at as the holder of, of, uh, of, of healing and uh, uh, sensitivity to spiritual walks, whether it is Christianity or pagan or Wiccan and other forms so people go there you know regularly it's a tiny tiny island and so all of us and, and perhaps in my projection hold iona up as this place of light of beauty tiny little mile mile wide three mile long island and so i was and and so i get there and i suddenly feel it, like a dream i i feel all levels of of awarenesses and i i feel like iona has carried in the microcosm in this little tiny island she has carried the microcosm of the macro pain and adventure and beauty and joy of all of us and all of the earth so she, we're drawn towards her and with her, she carries the joys and beauties and pains of, of the all that is. So yeah, I, I felt pain when I went there. It surprised me. I wanted her to, you know, lift me up and, you know, take my melancholy away forever. And it's like, she um, held me, held me with that and also, showed me the paradox, the yin and yang of the, you know, the beauty and the anguish of life. Like this is normal, Royce, this is us. So that's how Beautiful. I experienced her. Beautiful. Yeah. You, you spoke of it or uh, as I read it, um, you mentioned this and personally, I've never, I don't know if I've ever encountered a place that made me feel melancholic. Mm. So that's why I 
wanted a little more. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was that was uh, interesting to read about for me. Mm -hmm. And um, as a person who's traveled 130, what five countries. I yes, loved... you are. You are allowed to brag. <laughs> no, yes. it's just that I'm a traveler, and yes. um, but this was a pilgrimage, and I have been to Santiago de Compostela in Spain, and I took my mother there, and and this was something that, in the olden days before cars and airplanes and trains and things, people would it would be a spiritual journey, and we're kind of. I hadn't thought of this, but it, uh, can can you say a little bit more about that? Because I feel like the book really encompasses that. And I don't know. It, it, it's something that I hadn't really given it much thought or awareness. And yet with by reading the book, I was brought into it and 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 viewing the book and the journey, this specific journey as a spiritual one. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little more about that? So the way that the Ridgeway spoke to me, called me to 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 traverse, uh, came in 2009 when I read a New York Times uh, travel article. Okay, so I read a lot, you know, <laughs> and you know, you travel a lot. I've not traveled as much, but I love to travel. And and when I read about that. Uh, trail there there was this uh, energy compelling me to to go there and I, I I just knew that I would and you know almost 10 years later I did this mm -hmm. well <clears throat> so how does one describe the unity between body and soul and earth and and self and life I I I don't know. I I think the the captivating the part that captivated me was how old this trail is, and and always wanting to go to England and never had and you know have these beautiful pictures of countryside England. Um, it it be it captured my imagination to take a walk an english walk into history into myself onto the earth and it became a moving vision quest i like that i i felt invited by all of that and you know, how whatever you know whatever that means i mean some sometimes we can say you know yes the earth does speak the soul does speak, the land does speak. Uh, and, and so with, you know, it's probably the limits of our English language. How, are, how is it that something captures our imagination? And it not only captured mine, I felt like that there is a, a, a story on the Ridgeway Trail that somehow reflects so much of our Earth's history and our humanities experience uh, both the joy that we have brought onto the earth and and also the tragedy so it it grabbed me in that way without me consciously knowing it i felt like i began to feel like this is our story in the global sense that along this hundred mile walk so much of who we are as beings and so much of who the earth is as somehow perhaps a living being has uh, expressed itself in that little bit. Uh, that's why I think Iona attracted me too on that little tiny rock or some of the oldest rocks on earth, oldest. Only in Australia are there older rocks well, the Ridgeway may not have that, except it is the oldest path uh, in that part of England and Europe. It So that ancient stuff of life compelled me. And I felt like it was going to 
also offer me uh, a way to be in a in a new way and it did uh, you know a, a moving vision quest having a vision that i did not know yet of my own sense of self being created and being recreated ending up in this fabulous book yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. we're speaking of the geography of the soul dreams reality and the journey of a lifetime by dr royce fitz mm -hmm. how what is there anything else you'd like to um share with us like hiking how many miles would you hike every day was there i loved how it it was yeah. all just um inspired by the mood of the day sort of thing that's how you it seemed like you well, described it yeah. oh thank you that that's a great reminder so on any hike of any nature you're always coached you know plan ahead do this do that and uh, i could not do that uh I probably would in some other setting. Uh, however, this was not possible. I, I couldn't settle. I didn't want to have an iter itinerary that was so strict. And so I I did, you know, a day, at a, a day ahead, maybe calling for reservations along the way. And sometimes that worked really easily and sometimes not so easily. Um, but yes, uh, that's how I needed to, to take this saunter, this Stravag, kind of that defiant need to, to let the day tell me what to do and how to be. Yes. The unraveling. I, I yeah. loved that. Yeah. Uh, I, I just could not schedule myself other than a day at a time. And, you know, it is kind of spooky. And, you know, this, it is England, you know, everybody. so it's not like I'm in the outback and Australia trying to do this. I wouldn't do it that way there. This invited the possibility of being in tune with uh, the path, with the um, as meeting people along the way and letting letting the agenda uh, set itself and unveil itself unveil. That, I, that's what i love the best because that's how i like to travel mm. i prefer i don't like scheduling either i like i walk out and i just whoever comes to me is supposed to come mm. to me mm. and i loved that about how you made this journey because i resonated a thousand percent with that mm -hmm. I, I find that so exciting and inspiring and it's almost like the messages from the gods and goddesses or you know um just mm -hmm. come forward and and mm -hmm. bring in whatever needs to come out mm -hmm. yeah i felt very in tune with whatever you just said <laughs> yeah yeah well, at modern day we're so scheduled you know we wake up turn alarm clock gotta go get dressed get have breakfast go to work work nine to five blah, blah, blah. you know it's just so so i that's what i love i love the freedom mm -hmm. that was portrayed in this book thank you i i do too and it's all very real um you know for instance one of those days as i was walking early in the morning i'm i met this delightful family uh, and their uh, little boy was riding a bicycle a tiny bicycle on the ridgeway i mean who can say that who can say they did that and i and, and i just stood there and watched he was just riding up and down this trail and his parents were there and so we had this beautiful encounter and um and uh found out he was uh a part of the Royal Air Force, and he was on leave for a few weeks. And uh, without getting into the whole story, uh, it, he he was a very engaging guy, and uh, and and he said, "So what are you doing?" You know, and I blurbered, I I I, I blundered, and what blundered? What's the word? I burbled out, but the truth. <laughs> And, you know, I, I gave him way more information and he looks at me, you know, 
quizzically and Winkle and and he says um he, he says dreams huh you're a priest huh or a minister huh yeah I guess I am and and he goes well you look like a wizard you know Sorry. and and then and it's like yeah okay I'm just gonna own that uh, and he absolutely. and he and he said uh, you need to talk the the bishop of Canterbury needs to talk to you <laughs> and I thought yeah okay yes let's do this so it was just a little gift along the way and as you said how, how does this stuff unfold and you know people are open they want to be I want to be and uh, it became a beautiful memory along the trail it was I loved how when you encountered the um, the guard uh, and when you disembark a plane I can't remember the word right now oh when I was getting off the plane and getting yeah. into customs what are you doing yeah customs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. the word sabbatical came to mind because uh, he resonated with that yeah he could accept that it's like, yeah I, I didn't know they were going to ask me questions what yeah. are you doing in England uh walking <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. I loved that. I, I loved how uh, just honesty. It, I just feel uh, it was a capture, a, a snapshots or um, poetry and dreams of of this beautiful landscape uh, from a beautiful soul. It was a real cap look into you as a person as well, which I loved as well. Um, deeply profound and um, just running with consciousness in, in a way and taking note of dreams and incorporating dreams and just it's almost like a it's a different way of being creative um, mm. than I'm used to but it's definitely this 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 incredible thread of creativity that a fountain that was just guzzling thank you well yeah. thank you so when you said uh it into my soul how you were describing that uh, it, the book is an invitation for others in their own dream and their own with their own straveg for their own sake to have to explore their own undiscovered country mm. so that i i want uh, if nothing else i want people to know that this is for them uh to be to know that this is their invitation whatever that looks like whatever their straveg looks like however they are being called i feel after finishing it so inspired on so many levels mm. uh it, 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 i mean to travel the ridgeway trail to experience iona to to keep journaling like sometimes i go through moments where i journal a little bit but i this this book reminded me of the importance of everyday journaling you know mm -hmm. and and how therapeutic and and how good that is for us well you know to be honest to do this every day to journal every day yeah I know some people do and you know I'm not one of them except I do coach I'm a really great coach about doing that or and 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 yet that is my model that I do carry is to journal this life so that we know ourselves for the sake of others this is a circle Mm, beautiful. Well, anything else you want to add before we uh, come to an there, arbitrary close? Oh, <laughs> yes. If this were my dream, yes. Yes, if this were my dream. So um, the end of the book, I find I am... I, I still am amazed at how this dream ends. You know, with sometimes when we do dream work, that's the question. How does this dream end? 
Mm. And this story ends in a way that I, I had no conscious awareness that it would happen. And, and that, that something about a flow that is beyond us. Mm -hmm. And that I, I'm not going to tell the ending, I, because, it, you know, it may not be as dramatic for some anyway, as it is, it is and was for me. It, that uh, way of experiencing the quote, end of the trail was one of the greatest gifts I've ever received. Mm -hmm. It was like <laughs> all, all that I have had yearned for was right there. Mm. Well, that's a very enticing uh, hook to for everyone I, to, yes, to read for so. yourself and find out yeah. what the ending is like. Yeah. The Geography of the Soul, Dreams, Reality, and the Journey of a Lifetime. Beautiful book by Dr. Roy Spitz. I'm so happy to have read it. I feel inspired. I feel jazzed. It's enlightening. It's, it's just a beautiful book. And I highly recommend to all our listeners out there running. Where, where can one get the book? When will it be available? So uh, most recent info is late summer. Okay. And uh, uh, the publisher and I are working on ways to have some pre-orders if people want to do that. That's not set up yet, uh, but we're, we're working in that direction. So, you know, Facebook, TikTok, information is going to be forthcoming. I miss your TikToks. Yes, well, uh, so I was ordered in quotes by the publisher to get back yes. onto social media. So yes. I'm, I'm making those slow, um, Stravage. Uh, yeah, Stravage. yeah. Stravage. 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 Stravage, yes. In, into social media. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, be sure to order, pre-order your copy right now through amazon.com i would imagine well so the pre-orders are yeah the pre-orders aren't ready but send me an email you know we'll 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 start doing or go to flint hills uh publishing flint as in rock flint i love hills. the flint part of the book too yeah the and yeah, the tie-in with the name of the publisher i, mean, I know how perfect who, who could invent this orchestrated by the grandmaster <laughs> all of them all, all of the of yes. all of the above yes yes. Mm -hmm. yes yeah so just send me an email but but you know st you know start following me on facebook and TikTok and instagram uh perhaps a couple of other places but just look for me there uh, and your website roycefitz.com Roy, roycefitz.com all right well wonderful we're gonna tie up this episode of the Healing Dreams Project. Uh, you're welcome to like us on on all the channels. We have Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, TikTok, Instagram, iHeartRadio, and, and call the Dreamer hotline. Yes. The number is 720 Nine five again seven two zero five seven three nine one nine five. I'm Viviana. I can be reached at viviana.org backslash magic is my my more esoteric page. Normally I am a musician and traveler, fellow traveler. <laughs> All right, thank you so much once again, and uh, everyone run. Don't walk <laughs> and grab your book, The Geography of the Soul. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, Viviana.